All right, hello everybody. This is Mr. Anderson, True Crypto Twenty Eight on Twitter. So I'm bringing you another video. Uh, this one will be on day trading. Just going over a very simple day trading technique. You know, ultimately this particular uh, topic is is one that I decided to come up with because things have been a little bit volatile. And reality is, for day trading, you need some volatility, right? Uh, you know, with these videos, especially the ones that I'm doing for the public. I'm trying to think of concepts that'll work as a as a single video. Uh, you know, I did some different techniques on how to look for divergence in a very specific way. It's going to be helpful for you guys. And you know, one, one of the problems is like I did a MACD video and I sort of made fun of uh, the MACD and, and all its flaws. Uh, but at the same time, I don't hate the MACD, right? You know, I basically I taught that to my students, and when I do that, the difference is I'm not just showing them. You know, one lesson I might go into literally four or five different ones so that it's very detailed and in-depth so I can show them that look this is all the things that's wrong with it and you should never utilize it in this way but there are a lot of aspects that are correct and if you can focus on those then you're gonna be a more efficient trader so that's the idea so I try to avoid being too vague in, in a single video or a lesson uh, for the public because I don't want to give them just partial information so it's a little bit hard uh, but at the same time what am I gonna do I'm not gonna put a 10 hour lesson up for you either so uh, for someone that's interested in that I would say look contact me on Twitter uh, through a DM we'll have a conversation about becoming a student if that's your interest or find someone else that is teaching and I'm sure there's a lot of good people out there uh, but ultimately with this particular video we are going to speak specifically about day trading it's very simple we're not getting into something complicated this is a kiss k-i-s-s -S, keep it simple stupid type of concept and I think you guys will like it uh, I'll tell you right now, it's not about high strike rate at all. I'm, I have no interest in that. I don't even care if, you know, if I only hit on 20% of my trades. That's fine. Uh, and with this type of system, if you don't have volatility, which I'll speak about in a moment, then you're going to run into some trouble and you're certainly going to have a low hit rate. You'll probably have a low hit rate even with the volatility, but what you'll find out is that uh, although you'll have a low hit rate, you're still going to win. Uh, you can see me. You're still going to make money because of the fact that you're going to be in a position to where your gains are much more significant than the losses. So, what do we need? Not to go ahead and go too far in it. I'm trying to rush, as you can tell, because I don't want this to be a two hour video. But ultimately, day trading, what we need is volatility. So, how you find the volatile assets, stocks, or uh, crypto, or whatever you choose to, to look into, uh, some sort of scanner. I'm not going to do that. That's another video, but. You're going to want a price spike or dump. You're going to want some type of unusual volume, right? Because we need movement to take advantage of any type of day trading system, which this little system here is going to need that as well. Then you're going to need two charts. One five-minute chart with a super trend indicator. It's a very simple, simple indicator. If you guys need to know how to find that, go up to indicator, type in the word super trend, all one word. There's going to be a million of them that pop up. Find one with a lot of likes. Uh, don't do the buy sell type ones, but find one with a lot of likes. I think I have this one up right here. No problem. The other chart that you're going to have up is going to be an H1, a one hour chart, just with RSI. Nothing more. That's it. You're ready to roll just with those two things, okay? So you're going to have those two things. And what you're going to do is, if you can, split your chart like that. That'd be nice. You're going to have your five minute on your left. We'll get rid of this stuff. Let me go ahead and clear out the writing. And you're going to have your hourly on the right. And it's set up just like I said. Don't worry about all this nonsense that I have in there. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. All I have is my five minute with my super trend. And then I have my one hour with my RSI. Nothing more, okay? And we'll jump into something like, I mean, let's look at something like Cardano if we want. Doesn't matter what we look at. I know Cardano, obviously, to short it, you're going to need to be on Bitfinex or uh, we're going to have to be on. Bitmex or uh, Finex, but ultimately, because the charts are going to be better on Binance, I'm going to look at that. So let's just assume that it's the same chart just for the purpose of making this video, okay? And very simple rules. This is an RSI, which I've labeled. I went ahead and I set this box up, which is usually about 70, 30, but I set it up for 52 to 48, okay? Why? Because I want to see anything that's above this 50 line and below the 59 line on RSI. I'll make this bigger so you see what I'm talking about. Okay, Let's go ahead and look at the RSI. Pretty simple. As I mentioned, the setup is ultimately, let's see where we're at here. Sorry, guys. Okay, so this guy right here, if you want to do the same thing, it's normally going to say something like 70, 30. So you come in there, 
I put it at 52 and 48, give ourselves a little room around that 50 line. And it makes it a little easier to see if you're utilizing this setup. Get rid of this guy right there. And that's all I wanted. Now I'm going to do this. And here is the whole system. It's very simple. When we have volatility, first we're going to establish identify volatility on the chart, which we'll do in a minute. But we're going to have volatility. And if we're above the 52 line on the RSI on the one hour chart, so we're on the one hour chart above 52 on RSI, we're only looking for longs on the five minute chart. And I'll get to that part in a minute. Part two, if we're under the 48 on the hourly RSI, we're only looking for shorts. Very simple, right? Above 52 on the hourly, looking for longs. Below 48, looking for shorts. But how do we establish what it's going to be, long or short? Well, we'll get into that right now. So first things first, let's go ahead and pick this guy out right here. Obviously, you can see the charts bouncing. There's volatility. Uh, there's no cherry picking here. You'll see that it doesn't matter if we're going up or down or sideways or left or right. It's not going to matter. I'm picking this guy because of that volume right there. Right? So let's just choose him. When I click on this, it's going to go ahead and appear on that side of my chart as well which you can set up here as well. You just go ahead and click time, crosshair, and symbol. Uh, you can put drawing there as well, so the drawings are clear. They're appearing on both sides, that's up to you. But uh, let's go ahead and choose that moment where you just had this huge jump up here with a big volume on the hourly. And we'll get into the trading. Right there, let me find the same time frame. All right, you see we're in the same zone. Look on the left and the right, see this right here? So it's basically going to start right in this area. Let me go ahead and just mark it so I know where I'm at with a vertical line. It appears like the volatility happened right there. We had a big spike, volume, etc. So we missed this entire move. So don't worry, I'm not going to cheat and say that I got it. So we'll act like we wait it until after that occurred. And this is super trend. Super trend is pretty easy. Uh, a green line means you're buying. A red line would mean you're selling. But of course, you know that we're looking left and right, as I spoke about. And what we're looking for is only looking for longs when this is above this purple, which is the 52. And then we would only be looking for shorts when it's below the 48. So here we say what? This is green. Of course, this was the big move, so we're not going to take any credit for any of this. Now, this one's red, meaning short, broke below super trend, which would mean short. But because we're above 52, we're ignoring this. So I'm just getting the ground rules out so you guys are aware of this. And you want to write that down, you can feel free. Uh, but this would be a long right here. Watch. We broke out of that big trend, finally pulled back a little bit. Now, once you go back into Super Chen Green, we're going to call this a long, right? Couple ground rules that I'm going to go ahead and throw out to you that doesn't occur here, but I want you to know that if this is about the fourth candle up on this breakout, I'm not taking it. So this is going to be a trade. So don't worry, we're going to show you that how this trade will actually be a loss, which is good. I'd like to start out with a loss to show you what this is. But I do want to lay out a ground rule here. This is a consolidation, and then this is literally the first higher candle. So this is a perfect entry. That's fine. You would qualify this. But if it say it was something like this, you see this guy right here? If this was the trade, if it was one, two, three, four candles in, if it's three in and it doesn't look like it stretched too much, that's fine. Uh, but if it's four candles in, I would wait. So let's say this thing stretched. I would wait for it to pull back something like that, right? And then the next higher candle, meaning just one candle higher, right? So let's say this candle just peaked over like this. That would be the entry. Now, obviously, this is all within a short, the example that I'm giving you. So you wouldn't be looking for a long. But I'm just trying to point this out, that if you saw something like that, you have to be wise enough to say, hey, wait a second. I don't want to take the fourth up candle here you know i don't want to take the fourth the eighth the tenth nothing like that so you want it within the first few it doesn't mean you're not going to trade now one thing you can do is either one wait for a pullback and then wait for that first higher candle or you can wait for it to cross this purple line here on super trend right and once it recrosses like that you would enter now again i'm under the short mode right now so you wouldn't be doing any of these so don't worry about it but i just want to get the ground rules out so now let's just run through a bunch of trades and i'm going to go quick okay so here we are with day trading. Boom, there's an entry. Now this stretched up to a 1% gain, one quarter percent. More than likely if I'm up, you know, on an alt more than a percent in that range, all likelihood I'm probably gonna move my stop to about break even. 
Another thing you can do, it's up to you, especially if it stretches to like two, three, four, you know, maybe let's say if it stretches about three, four, five percent, you want to start to protect those gains. So if you lose this purple line, you might want to consider exiting, but I'm going to leave the exits up to you, right? Obviously, an exit would be if you lose the green super trend line. So let's just act like that's what happened in this case, and I'm going to call it a loss, and that would be the worst exit. But you see the loss, right? 0.3%. No harm done. You're doing okay. Okay? What happens? So you're in short mode here. We look to the right side of the screen, which is this, and we can see that everything is still peaking over there. And here's one of the situations I just spoke about. This one actually breaks out, and we can tell this would have been a great entry. It would have been very wise. I could say, oh, look how great this would have been. But I already gave you a ground rule that said, hey, don't take this after a fourth candle. You don't want to be four candles in, or even if it was three and they looked really stretched, just wait for a pullback. So technically, this did pull back, and, and we can call this one an entry here, but you know, probably like to see some sort of consolidation, which occurs here finally. Uh, so again, I want to be as upfront with you guys as possible. You get a little consolidation, a little bit of a narrowing type triangle type situation there. And then finally you get an entry over here and it still works out pretty well, right? So you see you took a small loss, but then this immediately utilizing volatility gets you up to about a 5% max win. Uh, it starts to pull back. Again, if you chose to exit here on this cross of the purple, I understand that's up to you. Uh, and, and that would probably be a good decision. If you know anything about candlesticks, it's probably helpful, right? Ultimately, there's a few things you can do if you want to go back before you start and map off, you know, like on the four hours, some support and resistance. And if you see some rejection out of resistance, then, hey, maybe that's a good spot to take some off or to cash out completely. Uh, the other thing is, is if you just know candlesticks, seeing something like this and, and seeing it start to fade, obviously, that's like one terrible looking 30 minute candlestick, right? Or an hour long candle. That's not good. So same type of thing you would know to get out. But. Again, even ignoring that, just use, utilizing what I'm explaining in this basic system without the knowledge of the candlesticks, without the knowledge of support resistance, you'll see you could do just fine with the system, okay? So you were out here basically, but again, it, it would have peeled back all the way back to about a 1.5% loss if you waited to exit. Don't do that. Don't get yourself up 5 6% and let it peel back that much. You know, the worst case scenario I would say is giving up 50%, and, and even that I don't want to do. Uh, that's not ideal, but if that happened, you're somewhere in this range here. Uh, so let's say another you know, three percent winner, which is good. Here's a loss, right? Uh, this one stretched, but I still want to show it to you. Let's just say you got in, started to move up a little, ended up losing, but it's only about a one and a quarter percent loss. With an all, try not to lose more than one and a half percent. Usually, the super trend will get you out uh, before that. But if for some reason you've seen you're stretching about one and a half percent loss, just get out. The other thing that might come up. And I know I'm running a lot by yet, but I'm trying to keep it short. Go ahead and if you need to, uh, rewind it, watch it again a couple times so you get this. But if I see something like this, you're think about it, you're in a low time frame. This is basically like a moving average on this RSI. And if you're on a low time frame day trade, the last thing you want to do on a long is have some sort of moving average that's moving down. So if you see that roll over, you wouldn't want to be in there anyway, right? So it would be very smart to get out in that situation or in that situation but even taking it here it wasn't that big of a loss we could see that right i'm um, just giving you guys some ground rules of how to be a little bit more intelligent about it i still want to take this trade let me see right there yes so you would have taken this one you would have lost right okay so we see a couple losses i don't mind these little losses on an alt you know they're going to be one percent one and a half percent usually max but what ends up happening look guys this is why we're taking care of taking advantage of volatility boom we get in right there Thank you very much. Happy to be a part of this and play. Six and a half percent at a max there. And uh, we can see it started to pull back. Let's see what happened. It stretches even further. So whether you exited here or not, that's up to you. Now remember, if you do exit and it recrosses, you can go ahead and enter again, right? Because you never lost the super trend. You're just being protective. So whether you entered here uh, and it went back up or you re-entered on a recross, you know, and tried it again, that's up to you as well. It would have worked out. So that's up to you. Uh, but you could see that ultimately had some kind of combination of about 8% gains, right? So that's good. Well, now this one is a short, but it's above. So you, it would have been a great short, but we're not going to look at that at all because it had nothing to do with us because we're following the rules. And then here, I'm going to count this even if it doesn't work, but it's really close. You see this guy over here. So remember, you're supposed to be above that 52 line, but let's just count it anyway and see what would have happened. If you want to discard it because of this long candle, because you do see there's some consolidation, you got a big candle, you might say, eh, maybe I missed. 
and maybe you waited till it pulled back and got here. They end up being about the same entry, so let's take the worst one. Uh, and then ultimately you would have been fine, right? You would have been in a position to where you gained a couple percent, gave back some. Uh, remember, if, if you start to roll over on your moving average, purple line, you're probably out. If you gain two and a half percent, you probably don't want to give up more than half of it anyway on a moving stop. So, so far, I'm guessing you like this, right? Uh, but I'm going to give you some other examples. Let's see this one here. This would be a law. You know, let's, it stretched up for a little bit, but not much. This is a loss. Oh, you know what? I apologize. Technically, let me be smart about this. This one here, you know, we were we were fringing right here on this level. This one, we could see now. You know what? Let me count this one because technically it's outside. So happy to count it. I don't want to cherry pick. Again, this guy stretched, so you, know, you might have said, "Hey, I'm going to wait till it goes back." But even if you did that, it ends up being a loss because you ended up losing this level. On the purple line, but you would have went back in after it recrossed. So you know you're probably entering there, and you're out there. But again, when you lose, they're small, and that's kind of the purpose of this particular system is to give you very small losses. So let's move forward in time now till about this area and see what happens, which is right there. So it was already in an active short, so we don't want to act like we participated in it. If you happen to catch it, you were watching. You would have waited till it recrossed again, which is right there. At some point, you would have started up, maybe made it to a full percent. Probably would have broke even in the worst case because you see it recross. Once you start losing again, you're moving average and it rolls up, you're out. But let's just call it a break even. We don't want to take credit for that. Let me see if we're under this line. Again, these are suspect, but I don't want to take credit for anything or, or act as if the system is better than it is. So let's just call that a break even as well. Technically, it's a small win, but. I don't really care about the break evens on, on wins. We want bigger wins, right? That's the point of doing a day trade in the first place. All right, so this one is below 48 now, right? See this? So here we are, we're below 48. So now we're in short mode here. We're in the short mode, right? Let's see, right there. So here we are, we're down here on the short mode. We get in, went up a little bit. This was scary, maybe even exit it. I could understand that. Uh, but it ended up still holding the trade. So whether you exit it or re-enter right about there, you're still in a trade that now starts to work a little bit. You end up stretching to about 3% at some point. This could have been one that you lost and then re-entered in one. Or if you had the courage to hold, good for you. you got up to about 3% there. It started to peel back. You probably got out over that range, about a 1.5% win. And we wait for the next one, which was right there. This one looks like it's going to be a loss. So this one is a fringe one, obviously, but I'm going to count it as a short. So you got in there, immediately went against you, one and a quarter percent loss. Again, what are we noticing? Losses that are one and a quarter percent, one percent, one and a half percent sometimes, right, on alts. They'll be even smaller on Bitcoin. But the wins, you have some of those too that are very small, but a lot of much larger ones. That's kind of the point. So this one is now on the north side of this um, mid-range on the, uh, you know, I'm not going to count this. This is nice, but let's not count it because it was fringe again. Again, I don't want to make it seem like I'm cherry picking some of these. I'm going through them fast so you can see all the different day trades that you would have. This one again, you're in that middle range right there. So let's go ahead and look. That would be this one. Right. Okay. So here it is. Let's see on the screen, that's right about there. Just making sure it is one. Okay, so you got in there. This one stretches again, 3.5%. We all like to make 3.5%, right? It peels back. Maybe you got out 1.5%, something in that range, so be it. Again, if you're selling some as it stretches, that's perfectly fine too. This guy's a, a loser, but look, technically it's not, right? Because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 candles in. You're not taking that. You're waiting for the pullback, and it, it lost the signal, right? So in this guy, probably wait for the pullback on this one because it's one two three in but let's just say you take it here because again i don't want to cherry pick it would have been about a break even so you'll see there's a lot of break evens a lot of small losses i'm perfectly okay with that this guy seven this would have been a good entry but we don't take it because he's been stretching for too long right we wait for this pullback and then i want to show you closer the first higher candle in case you don't know what i mean by that I means as it pulls back whether it pulls back one or two or five you know a one big one 
or you know some sideways or two or three little ones something like that like not this not a single candle I want either a, a clear reversal where you're gonna have some type of higher low or some, some type of structure where you can obviously hold on to something once you see a candle that goes higher than the previous candle which is right here you could have entered right there you could have entered on the cross or that purple line that would have been up to you how you did it but let's just say you took the worst possible entry obviously you can see I'm, I'm making sure on every time I'm, I'm giving the worst entries instead of the best ones right but you can do better is the point and then here we go we got another stretcher which is good no harm no foul no risk now maybe let's say you didn't like that setup that's fine you would have re-entered there it's still a good win and what ends up happening you stretch to about 5.7 percent you exit at 3.6 in a worst case scenario let's just say you even waited till that candle close which was right there still 3.3 percent in that range you're, you're doing good so if you have volatility you're going to do just fine with this guy right same thing here stretches to about 1.6 percent ends up being you know about a half percent winner maybe even a break even this guy we ignore because it's a short we didn't break below yet we didn't break below we didn't break below i'm looking on the right side okay now again we are below here but we were already in an active short so we don't want to take credit for for any of this because when it broke below was here so you would have needed it to go back above that purple line and then back again which never happened when it crossed back above there was no short again on and on and on so you get the point right let's just see where we're at back into a long right here but this guy stretched let's see if it would have been an opportunity yeah right there you could have got back in about right there and it stretched to a four percent winner once it curled back on you you don't want to get back more than half you still would have held on to about two percent this guy would have been a loss i want to show it make sure we show all losses full disclosure and then what happens eventually I want to see how much did this guy stretch. One, two, three, four. So we would have waited for this little pullback. Higher candle. First first moment that you get a little bit higher candle, you're in. Let's take the worst possible entry. 4% turns into 5%. Turns into 6%. So whether you did this over one or two or three trades from some re-entries, that's up to you. But it stretched to 6% at one point. Back down to 3.7%. I think you're getting the gist of it. Let me show you guys uh, good old Bitcoin, right? Everyone loves Bitcoin. Bitcoin, let me tell you. Bitcoin's one of the most choppy, ridiculous assets in the world. I love to trade Bitcoin, of course, but you want to make sure that you have volatility, right? That is such a key. So, you know what might be a good idea? Let's take this guy, right? So here we are. We get this candle. I don't want to... I'll show you any... I'll show it to you anyway. Let's just say you just happen to be in during this because it was pumping here right so you can see things were pumping uh let's not i'm not trying to count this as part of my trick because it's ridiculous right but you can obviously see that this entire move if you happen to be using this system at that time you would have entered here right and literally it never gave you an exit right so obviously you know we're talking about an asset that you can use heavy leverage 17 percent that's ridiculous at one point probably stretched even higher but regardless it's not the point I want to act as if you saw that move, right? Here you are, you're seeing that move. Who would enter that? Who would enter after that? You'd have to be crazy, right? That's the point of this system is that we're trying to take advantage of volatility. The worst thing that's going to happen, you're going to get chopped out a bunch of little times, and, and that's okay. Uh, or the volatility fades, and you realize that, and you, know, you, you don't want to hang out playing with that. But the whole key is that if you get that volatility, and you're hoping to get some more, even if that means a big reversal. So let's pay attention and see what happens. So let's act like we missed that entire move, right? Well, clearly our sign the one hour is flying. So could we have gotten in? Would we have gotten chopped up? What would have happened? All right, well, let's focus in. Is this three, is this more than three bars? No, this is the third part. So we did enter here. Let's see what happens on this first one. Are we gonna get chopped out? Well, he stretched up to 1.8%. I'm gonna call this guy a break even at worst case, because obviously you're gonna move in a stop loss. But remember, if you you're getting close to this technically you could have obviously won on that right and we know that if it goes up to 1.8 percent you don't want to give all your gains back even though it's not a lot but let's just call it that because that was such an ugly candle let's just say it caught you off guard and you you had the market sell and get out even if it was a loss that's fine too uh so what happens finally we're here we're stretching uh 
Now, technically, this is one, two. These are little guys, right? So if you see that, look, you can enter. But again, I don't want to cherry pick. So let's just wait. Let's say we waited till we have this pullback. And then when you see the next candle that gets a little bit higher than that candle, you enter in that area. But let's take the worst entry. Goes here, scares the life out of you a little. Even if you got out and re-entered, that's up to you. Uh, but it was never down more than 1% on the position. And good old volatile Bitcoin after a crazy move or people... Probably thought there was going to be a big pullback. At least a lot of people were probably worried that, hey, this is going to come. You're trying to find a way in, and you have found the way in. And next thing you know, you gain 6.5% now uh, and probably at leverage. And then ultimately, and by the way, I'm not advising anyone to use leverage. It's only if you're a leverage player. But here we go. 6.5% if it peeled back on you, so be it. Now I would hope that you uh, held on to that line in the worst case scenario of 5%, but even if it went all the way back, you're still talking about 3.67% on Bitcoin, and that's after this mega candle. So good for you. Uh, you did a good job. Let me get rid of that guy. I don't know what just happens. Glad I marked that off. All right. I'll probably cut this video in a minute, but here's a law, so let's look at it. And boom, you entered there. You had to get out less than 1%. You can see that most of the Bitcoin... When you take losses in this, you're not going to lose more than like one, one and a quarter in that range. But at the same time, if you are someone that uses leverage, then you better prepare in your mind that, hey, I can, I have to choose a leverage that allows me to take on, you know, multiple 1% type losses. You're not going to be 100x doing this because um, you're going to lose your whole account each time that happens, right? So this guy stretches. So this would have been a no trade because of the stretch rule. But even if it was, again, small loss, but be smart with those. Same thing here. It stretches. So no trade here. Uh, you wait till it pulls back a little. Technically, that would have been right there. You're looking for your first high, higher candle. And this one looks like it's going to be a good one, uh, which it is. And next thing you know, you're consolidating, consolidating. Another breakout. Bulls are in control. You're taking advantage of volatility. Next thing you know, we're up 7.6% uh, here on a day trade, even if it peeled back to 5%. So be it purple line gets broken you probably want to get out up there which should have been in that six percent range but let's just call it there and here we are now look what happens on this sell-off the hourly suddenly is in the neutral zone so let's just wait till it comes down and now the hourly ends up breaking down so we're going to switch gears here we are we're going to now go from trading that long to trading a short right which is what right there okay good timing it happened to cross that purple we're already in a short we are being patient. We don't want to take advantage of anything that wouldn't have counted. So we wait for now. It's the opposite side because of short. We want to wait for a lower candle, which happens right there. So whether you entered there or there, when it closed, it's up to you. Uh, but you can see that this guy gave you a little bit of a short down to a good 4% winner. And if you let it come back on you, you would have been cutting that in half back, so basically about 2%. But there you go. That's Bitcoin. Obviously, the extra volatility actually made it much better. There wasn't many losses at all. Usually, you're not going to have such grand volatility like we've had at the time of me making this video. But that's an under, you know, the more volatility, probably the better the system's going to work for you. Uh, and that's why you want to make sure you're finding a volatile asset. Let's look at something like uh, B Trash. Uh, which basically, again, I know it doesn't short on Binance, but we don't get great history on, uh, on BitMEX. So let me just use that chart. I like the chart better. Same thing. And I'll go ahead and cut this video. We're just going to go and run through. Look, look at this gigantic run up right here. So it's a huge volatile move. But let me just look at the volume. You know, this guy. So you see this big old volume here. So we're showing you after a big run up, but again, same thing. If you just happen to any element of this that you saw, if you were paying attention and you basically knew, hey, you know what, there's some significant volatility going on, then there are ways to jump in, right? You wait for that purple line to get crossed. If it gets recrossed and you're in bull mode, obviously you see where the RSI is. These are all qualifying trades. I'm not. I haven't came out and just started with that because I don't want to say, hey, look, you're going to gain 15% every time because it's not reality. But here it is. Again, you could see that if you jumped in on any of these in a very volatile situation, look, you have to be fortunate, right? They're not going to run like this all the time. This happens to be a volatile time in the market. But you'll be surprised. You will catch them. You know, you understand how all assets, they move in waves. Everything in life moves in waves, right? Even light. Uh, so ultimately, everything moves in waves. So you know, if, if you've seen the first wave, there's going to be another. There's going to be a pullback, and 
Sometimes you got a five-way structure, some are three-wave structures, etc. So uh, ultimately, that's a key is to trying to catch some of that wave, and this is going to help you to get in and out of those to the upside and to the downside. Uh, so that's key. So here we are. We're, we're stretched out on this one. What 15% comes back on you, even if it was all the way back down to a 10%. Uh, so be it. But reality is, you never had to exit this guy, right? You actually stretched even higher, 20%. Let's just see. I mean, this is extreme, right? You know what happened recently. All with a simple strategy. All because you just seen something that moved on high volume and you said, hey, I want to be a part of it. And it ends up going to a 60%. This is ridiculous, right? This is not going to happen. It's very rare. But if you get a few percent, you're going to be happy, right? Uh, but in this case, we're just showing you an example of what happened at the time of making this video of some things. So I don't want you thinking, hey, I'm about to do this. I'm going to make 40 to 60%. But uh, the key is if you're making 3, 4, 5, 6%, you're going to be a pretty happy guy or girl. Uh, so let's look at it that way. So here we go. We had one that stretched a bit. So whether you entered here or here on the recross of the purple, I'm running through these pretty quick now because I'm going to end the video. But ultimately, you can see another 32%. I mean, that's again, it's absurd. But the key that the only reason I'm showing you this is that look how late we were, right? We were late to the party on this. I mean, super late. And then without even going forward, because look, there's even more gains here, you know, because why is that more gains? Because if you did get in here, it stretched to three and a half. It works case, you know, you're still one, two percent. Same thing happens again here. You know, you're basically two and a half percent, even if you call these break evens, but you're probably maintaining some of that. Maybe this one was a small loss, but I want to show you that automatically when this guy flips, right there right here well it was already in short mode let's see what happens point is it flips over in this case I don't want to take credit for this short but you could see you know you still would have had a the opportunity here if you look to the right side it technically is under that 48 level right there yes it is so you could have capitalized even on a short on this guy uh, so you get the gist of it just to review, what did we go over today? Simple KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid type of day trading strategy. We want to just eliminate all the thought process other than things like, look, if you know support and resistance, of course, map that out first. If you understand candlesticks, it's gonna make your trading even stronger, right? But we can take a very simplified concept like this and we can look to find volatility and volume and then take advantage of that. Are you gonna get 50, 60% moves like I've showed you? No, of course not. Uh, but depending on the market you're at, I'm assuming if you're getting a percent, two percent, you know, five percent, you're gonna be pretty happy. Uh, and that's the idea of this concept. The bigger key though is you notice that the risk element is very low. Uh, and that's what I like about this simplified system. It's a system that, you know, basically what I would do is when, when I would train people and bring them in and uh, we would have them trade, I would start off with something like this because we just wanted them to make some money. Uh, and, and wanted them to start to learn a process and to see that, hey, if you're systematic in your approach, uh, that can get you somewhere. So that's the idea and the concept behind this. Again, if you want to learn trading in much more in-depth detail, then, of course, I would advise you to get an instructor, a mentor, a trading coach. Uh, I offer that type of year-long process and program. So if you wanted to talk about that, just contact me through DM on, uh, excuse me, on uh, Twitter, which is True Crypto 28 uh, but if not, there's a lot of great people I'm sure out there that you can talk to. I would advise anybody, though, to truly get that assistance uh, and get some type of coaching or training because it's just not enough to go on and, and look at these type of videos randomly because you're going to get a couple pieces, but there's a lot that's also missing. And I'll tell you what, one of the biggest things about uh, YouTube, as good as it is, it's the same as when I started trading many years ago. We would read books. And in the books, there was a, some great information and nuggets and great pieces, but a lot of garbage. And unfortunately, with YouTube, they're teaching you a lot of things that just don't work that well, right? Like, I don't want a system. Like, I'm showing you this. I'm letting you know that, hey, there, this isn't going to have a high hit rate. But overall, you're going to do very well because your risk reward ends up being significantly better when you're in a volatile asset that has high volume. It's the same type of thing when, when you're learning anything. They're showing you things that you know are, are basically like coin flips, where it's like, hey, look, occasionally it's great. Well, that's fine, but the idea is you want to have thing, utilize things. If you're utilizing indicators, great. You want to utilize indicators that uh, work in a very specific manner, right? Uh, that give you something very specific that you're looking for in specific situations, right? How many times can I say specific? But I mean it. I mean ultimately that you want to eliminate everything else other than the fact that you're utilizing it for X, Y, and Z, even with the system, right? We showed you, like, hey, we're only looking for this, that, and the other, and that's it. And everything else we dismiss, it's garbage, we throw it out. 
And it's the same thing in, in your technical analysis. You want to put yourself into a position to where you can identify it. Uh, you know, when you learn candlesticks, you want to learn candlesticks in a manner that throws out, believe it or not, you know, I love, you know, I'm not going to trash any, any candlestick guys or any people, but, you know, there's a lot of great guys out there, and, you know, I read all their books. They were my Bible for a long time. But the reality is what I then realized is, you know what, 90% of it's garbage. Sorry. Uh, so ultimately, you want to learn it in a manner that is efficient for your trading and nothing more. Uh, so again, if, like I said, I, I think YouTube is great. And I was one that was basically self-taught so for the most part. I got lessons and training and things of that nature. But you know, I had to teach myself and it was just years and years of practice. So I'd advise you to get someone that truly knows what they're doing and get that assistance. But anyway, hopefully you like this particular video. If you have any suggestions for any others, feel free to let me know. And we'll go from there. This is True Crypto 28, Mr. Anderson signing out.